You have got to hand it to the Liberals. Having seen the worst economic contraction since the Great Depression and queues for Centrelink that go around the block like it's J.K. Rowling's first non-Harry Potter book that everyone bought and said, hey, this isn't Harry Potter. In those crippling conditions, the very first thought on Scott Morrison's mind was, I don't think workers have been fucked over just quite enough. These public service vampires are trying to push through a bill that'll allow businesses to change contracts with their employees with less than 24 hours notice. Golly gee, that is faster than it takes a PayPal check to clear. Just what the doctor ordered when you are staring down the barrel of a time that is promising to have a higher unemployment rate than the Great Depression, unlocking the legal equivalent of rapid fire. This classic meme format depicts exactly how the liberals see themselves when it comes to their economic credentials. And to be fair, so do I as it is beyond comprehension. After they doubled all debt accrued since Federation, even before they had the excuse of Corona, it's almost as if they saw into the future and still didn't prepare for Corona. Reducing taxes on big business over and over while still allowing them to say, nah, I'm not gonna pay it anyway. Yeah, okay, that's fair enough. That is why debt has doubled since the Liberals took office because we don't have the revenue anymore to pay for basic government functions. Now that they're bringing the national debt to over a trillion dollars, which is unfathomable, I, I swear that is more money than I make in a year. You know what their plan is to pay back that record smashing debt? Hint, it's their plan for everything ever. Cut the corporate tax rate again. That is their entire 75 year history as a party, condensed into just one baby shaped puzzle. Yeah, time to cut taxes now. Nope, nope, that didn't fit in that. Yep, there we go. Doesn't matter what the circumstances are. Help! My house is burning down! Don't worry, help is on the way. Mr. Speaker, the corporate tax rate is uncompetitively high. Let's do a bit by bit of this party of economic savants plan because otherwise you just won't be able to comprehend how high IQ it is. Debt at a record smashing high? Uh, cut business taxes so we can't pay it back better. Okay, a few more question marks in that than there is in the underpants gnomes plan. But no, no, in order to recover that lost revenue, they might, might increase the GST in a time of record low consumer spending. Because that's exactly how you get an economy moving, isn't it? Everyone knows that when the brake handle's on, what you do is you pull it up that extra 5% until you hear the click. Unemployment at a historical high? Oh, I've got the cure for that. We'll make it easier to fire workers for no reason. That ought to free them up to become entrepreneurs. Chugging that union busting bill they couldn't get past without Corona that arbitrarily disqualifies union officials because business owners don't like the shape of their eyebrows. And what else can you call it? Home brand Howard is doing what Brand Howard could never do. He's like Cole's chalk chip cookies. Somehow they're better than the real thing as he's passing the one parliamentary scourge that that quivering shaved chimp never could. Work choices. Even better, work choices infected with corona. Gliding through with no scrutiny, no public outcry due to the two month media hypnotoad chanting ScoMo's doing a good job. ScoMo's doing a good job. Which do me a favor, look at this painting. Whoever painted that is less insane than you if you think ScoMo's doing a good job. If you need any more evidence, this man thinks ScoMo's doing a good job. Look at him. He's just Alex Jones if he didn't sell supplements. We're breaking the conditioning! Ah! All the reasons the public likes Scott Morrison, job keeper, job seeker, those are things that Anthony Albanese virtually forced Scott Morrison to pass while he's just been sitting in the background reheating that work choices casserole and the public's response appears to be, Uh, all right, I'll choke down a piece this time because look at how tired he looks. He obviously spent all night reheating that. Even when they did pass JobKeeper, they put in all these sneaky little provisions that make it far easier for big business to claim it than small business. Delaying JobKeeper payments, which will force small businesses to fire their staff as they can't afford to keep them on, no longer making them eligible for the payment, And that's what Josh Frydenberg cynically describes as an integrity measure. A measure that pisses away the integrity of the program in the first place is they've essentially rendered it now just applicable to larger businesses. This is now, yet again, another handout to their donors. You could essentially replace the entire Liberal Party with this chimp pressing two buttons over and over. Cut big business taxes, give big business tax money. 
Mm, I'll choose you with a side end of you. The $90 billion worth of quantitative easing that they just winked and nodded to while the Reserve Bank wrote an alternative ending to Charlie and the Chocolate Factory where all the little shit kids are allowed to gorge themselves until they f***ing explode. Allowing banks to decide where they put all that money. The equivalent of 8% of the nation's GDP. When I did a video on that little scandal, I got your predictable chorus of econ students throwing a tanty. No, you don't understand. And the RBA is independent to the government. Jesus, you may as well be riding. Cocoa Puffs have five essential vitamins and minerals, dick liquor. Who do you think anoints the governor of the RBA? God? I know ScoMo does. Saying the Reserve Bank is independent is like saying the ABC and the Fair Work Commission are independent. These are positions that are appointed by the government of the day. What do you think it came down to when they decided to appoint the governor? A toss up between Philip Lowe and Wayne Swan? Uh, we'll go with our hack this time. You think it's just sheer coincidence that Ida Butrose, having raised millions of dollars for the Liberal Party in her lifetime, is now just the head of the ABC? That is what econ students are saying to me when they say the RBA is independent. It is so naive I imagine they look like this. I was homeschooled. Here's what the oh-so-independent RBA are now advocating under their oh-so-impartial Josh Frydenberg appointee Philip Lowe. Union busting. We should be looking at the flexibility and complexity of our industrial relations system. Oh, okay. Would you like strike breakers with that, Phil? Combine that with income tax cuts for the rich, raising the GST. Wow. The three things the Liberals want are the same three things the Reserve Bank wants. Guess it's just common sense consensus, which is why all international economic institutions are looking down on Australia like the joke we are. But no, no. Frydenberg and Philip Lowe, Thelma and Louise, down under. Them against the world, baby. Frydenberg's got Lowe's back and Lowe's got the Bergs. What a great sign that the Reserve Bank and Treasury are in agreement that this duh, is the way to go. Wow. Looks like that Thelma and Louise comparison was a bit too real. Anyway, like this video if you think Philip Lowe is low. This has been Millennial Ray Hadley signing out. But before we go, just that Simpsons video that we did on Monday where we got C grade Australian celebs and likened them to the Simpsons universe, the results are in. And it is an overwhelming landslide. I mean, the president of Rwanda gets lower margins than this. It's official. 99.9% .9 of you say that Scott Morrison is Spendocrat Diamond Joe Quimby. And as Matt's not editing this video, I can pretend that that was my suggestion and that he chose Homer and he can't do shit about it. So victory lap. Very small crouched victory lap over big bad Matt. Boo. Say boo, Connor. You hear that, Matt? We don't like you. Also, credit where it's due, Politically Irrelevant gave me this tweet with just this text. I think you're forgetting someone. Oh, how unbelievably remiss of me. So glad someone was on the ball. Also, someone did mention that I forgot to say that Peter Overton is Ken Brockman, obviously another faux pas of mine. Fully rescind the right as well to Nelson Muntz. Someone in the comments, and I can't remember who it was, sorry about this, but you nailed it. I'm not Nelson. I'm Jay Sherman in the insane asylum yelling, It stinks. It stinks. Yes, Mr. Shanks. Everything stinks. You see, I can accept criticism. Like this video if you think that's a more apt description. And also, I'm just going to say what we're all thinking. F*** Philip Lowe! I think too aggressive. No, I think that's bad. Please share and comment below. Command.